Hi, this is Steve with uh, TVG, and today I'm going to demonstrate how to use uh, databases with BB.NET. Uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna, I got a few modules that I created that have all the, uh, you know, constructors and you know, shit methods in there to build uh, tables and fields and stuff like that. I got it for SQL, MySQL, and uh, Microsoft Access. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and mess with Access today. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and bring up uh, Visual Studios here. Oh, that's good. All right, let's create a new project and call it test project I'll just test there we go All right, I'm gonna go ahead and import my modules real quick uh, I'll make these modules downloadable so you all can get them uh, get existing files lower lib something I was working on earlier uh, select here we go DB uh, yeah there we go that's it simple this thing ha basically has uh, your connections, your command, your readers, your uh, disconnect, here's your connection methods, a uh, bunch of uh, variable return types for t information. Here's some uh, class, I mean, some functions that return back a list of tables, list of fields, um, you know, create tables, delete tables, add tables, modify tables, all kinds of stuff, and then some uh, types for as far as creating fields. Okay, <coughs> I'm gonna go ahead and start by creating a database. I'm just gonna create a C drive just for easy pathing. Uh, it's gonna be a new. Uh, MDB file, which is this one, we'll call it test.mdb. <coughs> Ta-da, it's black, there's nothing in it. Close this out. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, go ahead and open up my form here. I'm going to start off by declaring the uh, path to the file we're going to be using, so I'm going to call this db path. Mm, let's see, path. Oh, my hands are cold. I've been outside. And of course, uh, the file, which is a uh, test.mdb. Okay, and that's pretty much all we need for that part. All right, I'm gonna start off by basically making like a little explorer for uh, looking up tables and fields inside of a database. Uh, right now, we hard coded the uh, the path, so later on we can add a little browse button if we wanted to. Right, I'm gonna create, start off with making a list box here for all my tables. I'm gonna copy paste it. This is gonna be my fields. We add a quick label here for. Uh, tables, uh, copy that as well, and fields. Put that on top here. Do -do 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 -do. Okay, this box, I'm like calling stuff list box one, this box two, so LST, tables, LST, fields. <clears throat> I'm going to go and create a few buttons right now because I'm going to need them later. I'm going to call this one, uh, well, you can add a table. Of course, the phone always rings when I'm doing recordings. Hope the secretary gets that. Um, add table. <coughs> right now, I'm really cons only considered with really adding tables and fields. So I'm going to do add field and call it BTN add field. There we go, short and simple. Two things to demonstrate that. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to my main form. First thing I want to do, I want to load the uh, tables into that list box. And so I'm going to create a uh, sub procedure here that uh, on form load is going to go ahead and launch this uh, procedure to go and get the list of uh, tables. So I'm just going to call it load tables. Okay, private sub load tables. All right. <coughs> oh man. <coughs> Ugh. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is create a, uh, an array so I can keep all the information I just get back because that's what the uh, the method or the function returns back to me. Basically, I'm going to be using the uh, call OLE db dot, there we go, and get fields. And it's simple. You basically pass it the, the path of the database. Oh, that's fields. I don't want fields, I want tables. And there we go. That's all. As you can see here, the return type is a collections array list. So, there's um, collections uh, array list. Equal. Ta da! Okay, so that's going to launch. That's going to give me the stuff. That's going to give me all the list of tables. So now I've got to iterate through the list and populate my, um, my list, my table list. Basically, this thing. 
but I'm first gonna make sure I clear it out so we can reuse the function. So I'm gonna go and clear out the table. It's lst tables dot items dot oops items dot clear and then I'm gonna do a for e I'm gonna do a just regular for uh for count statement, how do you say it? So for I as integers ah, hands still cold. Integer is equal to zero to uh, LST tables dot items dot count. Actually, no. I want to get it from the list. <laughs> dot count minus one. Always do minus one because in, it's index zero. <clears throat> okay, so there we go. That's going to go through all the lists. So now we've got to add them to the table. So we're going to do LST tables dot items dot add. And then we're going to add the item, which is LST, and then I because that's the item we're using, and two string. By default, should do two string, so we shouldn't have to worry about it. But there we go, just in case. Oops. There we go. All right, and that should be all we need. <clears throat> so if we were to run this, it should automatically load the list of tables, but we don't have no tables in there, so we don't want to do nothing. And we're gonna do the same thing with the fields now. <clears throat> but the fields happen only whenever we select an object, so we're gonna go here and select the index change. <clears throat> One thing we want to do here is whenever we select a, a new table, we want to always clear the list out for the uh, fields. So we're gonna do lst fields clear. And now we're going to do something. We're going to check to see if something is selected. And if nothing selected, I want to exit that sub. So if lst tables that selected index equals negative one, which is nothing selected, then exit sub. <clears throat> so now, if nothing is selected in table in the tables list, then this is going to clear out and it's going to exit. So nothing else is going to happen. Okay. So if something is selected inside that list, I want to go ahead and grab the list of uh, fields now. So I'm going to go ahead and just create a uh, Another function here called load fields and create a sub for it. Ah, there we go. Load fields. And <clears throat> simple enough. This one gets called from here, so you can just go off that, but you know, you can still do it. Uh, you can bring that down, put it in there, however you want. <coughs> Alright, whatever. Same thing as before, we're going to create a, a place to keep the uh, list of, of the items we connect. Which is also another collections array list, which is coming from that uh, module, the db dot get fields. Oops. This time for the get fields, it wants the file name, which is the, the db path, and it wants a table. And we already know what the table is because it's going to be selected. So we're going to go uh, lst tables dot selected item because item is the actual item inside it dot to string, and that'll return back our item. So now we have a list in there. <coughs> Now, what we want to do now is populate the uh, the list with the fields now. So, same thing we did before, we're going to iterate through them, and we're going to put them in the tables list. So, we're going to do for i as integer, equal to 0 to uh, list.count minus 1, and then we're going to go um, list fields.items.add, and we're going to add the uh, list, uh, i.toString, ta-da, that's it, that's done. So, <coughs> if we were to run this, it basically display all the tables that are in here, select a table, and then it'll fill in all the fields. And that'll work. The problem is that right now the table the database we created is black, so there's nothing in it whatsoever. So <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and create this button over here that creates a table for us. <coughs> go in here. Okay. Add table. <coughs> uh, basically one thing we want to make sure is that um, actually no add table okay. What we want to do is Ask for what the table name is going to be, and we want to make sure that table name does not already exist. So we can go ahead and build this thing here in a second and do that. So first of all, we want to be able to have a variable to store the name. So we're going to do dim uh, name as string, and uh, for now I'm just going to leave it blank. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I'm going to create a, a return method, or not return method, but a, a go-to uh, line here. So I'm going to be like. Uh, Ask again, whatever. There we go. And I'm going to do name is equal to input string. Input box, sorry. Input strings for files. <coughs> and prompt, uh, here we go. I'm going to call it table name. And the title is going to be uh, new table. And the defaults, I'm going to put blank in there. Close that off. 
I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna make sure that that name is equal to something. If it's not equal to nothing, I want to, I want to exit. So I'm gonna go if name equals blank, then exit. Oops. So there we go. Okay. Now the reason for the ask again is in a second we're gonna check to see if the the table if that name already exists. So we're gonna create a, a for loop that goes and checks through the tables and make sure that it's not in there somewhere. So we'll do for <coughs> not list that. I'm just gonna count through. Um I'm trying to remember how I did it last time. For i as integer is equal to zero to um list t tables that items that count minus one I'm gonna do if uh, name is equal to LST tables dot items I dot t string then go to ask again. But <coughs> I want to tell people why they're going back, so I'm gonna do a message box real quick. Oops, message box, and tell them that um, the table at uh, okay, how about table hold on, already this. Through the punctuation. There we go. Ta da. Alright, so the table name uh, exists. It's going to say it already exists, and then it's going to go back to asking you for the name. <clears throat> Alright, now the actual part where we create the table. This is great. This is why I love these modules because they're so easy to use. Okay, I'm going to go O L E. I need to make an easier name. DB dot create table. Uh, that passes the path. Or DB path. And then the table that I want to create, which is the name. That's it. That is it. <clears throat> now I want to refresh the uh, <clears throat> the table list. You know what I'm going to do over here? Just realize I'm going to go ahead and copy this clear and stick that in here. That way it's always in there. I know we didn't double clear it up here, but it don't matter. All right. <clears throat> the reason I stuck it in there is so I can reuse that function without having to worry about anything. So like here, like the reload, I just want to do load tables. And that's it. It reloads the tables, no problem. Okay. I'm gonna go up here, take a look. Alright, so now we can create a we can create a table and add the table. And now we want to add a field. So thing is when we add a field, we want to make sure that, that that a table is selected. So first that's the first thing we're gonna check. If uh LST tables that selected index equals negative one, then exit sub. Okay, so now a table has to be selected. Now what we want to do is do the same thing we did before. We want to create a name, and we're going to create another ask again. I should just copy and paste. <laughs> okay, uh, name is equal to input box um, field name, and then name field. Okay, if name equals blank blank, then exit sub. <clears throat> now we're going to search through there again. For i as integer, oops, is equal to 0 to lst fields that items dot count minus 1. This time we're going to fields because we want to make sure the field name doesn't already exist. So now we go if name is equal to lst fields dot items, um, the item value you want to check. To string then uh, msg box field already exists. Oh, <laughs> I was wondering what the hell's going on. <laughs> go to f again. There we go. <clears throat> and that does it. Okay, so now, <coughs> now the thing we need to do is. Uh, when you create a field, they have a type. And um, let me show you here the, the the file here that creates these things. Uh, open there we go. <laughs> All right, let me create the final fields where it creates it. Here's create tables, drop tables, alter tables, alter tables. Here is field. As you can see here, it creates a field and it creates a type. The type. These are examples of the type by text 32. Basically, it's going to be a text field with 32. Uh, Yes, an index 32. Uh, I don't know how you want to say that. Uh, down here, I have a few examples of other ones, like uh, here's a by, you can write integers, long, singles, doubles, 
decimals and text and memos. Memos are pretty much you can stick entire HTML codes and all kinds of wild stuff in there. But all right, <clears throat> go back over here. So now I'm gonna get a type. So I'm gonna do a dim uh, type as string. And I'm do actually I don't really care about it, so I'm gonna just do straight off here. Input box uh, field type. And then by default, I'm going to put the uh, text 30 just in case. There we go. <clears throat> so now we have type. So now to actually create the field, we're going to do uh, ildb.create. Let me see this create table. Add field. That's what it's called. <laughs> I have create table and add field. All right. Ah, double click doesn't work. All right, okay. DB path, and then we want the table name. So LST tables dot uh, select the item. Oh, not items. Items. Ah, two string. Okay, and then the field name, which is the name gave it, and then the type, which is the type. And that is it. <coughs> Next thing we want to do is load fields. So, <coughs> and all right. So now I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and run this thing so you can see what it does. <coughs> all right. Here's the program. Tables, fields, nothing in there right now. Create a table. Add a table. We're gonna call this one users. There's user has been added. You click on it, no, no fields. So now we're going to want to add a field. Uh, I'm going to do uh, first name, uh, text 30. So we're going to add another field. Uh, last name. Okay, okay. We're going to add another field. Um, DOB. Make it all gay like that. Okay. And then we're going to add another field. Um, say we want to do um, age. And here we want to call it integer. Now, it might just be INT. I'm not really sure. I can find out by going and doing a quick check on the web. So, I'm going to go ahead and bring up uh, Google. And uh, yeah, I got that iGoogle, whatever the hell it's called. Or classic, whatever that shit is. All right, I'm gonna do a quick check for um, MS uh, caps lock. Axis uh, field types. There we go. Boom. There's different fields you can use: text, byte, integer, long, single, double, rep, whatever the hell that is, and decimal. So integer we find. So I can use integer. It's short. That'll work fine. So if I also go back to my program, integer will be fine. There we go. Ta-da! It's done. So I got these created. And there's a bunch of other stuff. You can create dates and stuff like that. Now, of course, what happens if you want to create an auto number and an ID and make it hidden and all that stuff? Well, <coughs> the methods in here, the ones we kind of created here to add, it's an add a simple field. It's not actually doing all kinds of wild stuff. Uh, you got to write a query that does that shit. Not really a query, but more of a, a statement that does it. Uh, we can go in here and find out what the auto number is, which is the auto number will be a just auto number. Yeah, it's a different type of stuff. I'll show you in a little bit. All right, this what we got right now. I just want to show you that this does exist, and that this did create the fields and tables. So I'm going here. Uh, here it is. I'm open it. Here we go. So there's a table user we just created. Open it. There's names, last names, database, uh, date, date of birth, and age. Close this out. Want to look at the constructions of it? There it is. Text, 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 text. Number. Look at the text. Field count or field size. Thirty. So that works. Now, if you want to go ahead and add another, add another item like a, uh, like a what do you call it? An auto number ID. You can do that. Auto number. There we go. And then you know we can make it the key. And that's it. Close this. It's gonna ask you if you want to save. Yes. All right. So now we've got the program running uh, here. It doesn't show you here, but as soon as you click here, it's going to automatically refresh the list. There's a list. IDs in there now. It's another IDs in there. And it looks like it's alphabetic. You can create a sort option and do however you want with it, but there we go. 
So it did work. It did create the fields. It does read it. It does see the database. It's awesome. <clears throat> okay, and that's simple. Add create fields. Now we want to go ahead and delete fields. So we create a button to add and delete fields. I mean, uh, delete fields. I don't want to do alter. I mean, you can, but it's the, the stuff's in there for it. But I don't want to mess with it. Okay, create a button real quick. Just copy and paste another one. This one's gonna be called. I hate when this thing gets all reset. Delete field. And again, delete field. Go in here. First thing I want to do is make sure they got a field selected. So I'm gonna do LST field dot selected index equals negative one, then exit sub. Okay. Now what happened? Then Oh, here. There we go. Okay. Now, I want to delete the field. It's pretty simple. It's going to be oldb dot <coughs> delete field. Okay. File name. The table you're going to delete from. So this is be the uh, list of tables that selected item that's your string, and then the selected field. So the same thing as list fields that selected item that two string. And that is it. Now we want to be able to refresh the list of fields so we know it's gone. So in here we're going to have, um, what was that, load fields. There we go. So now we run this. Select the user tables. And then we can be like, uh, let's get rid of date of birth. Date of birth. Let's hope this works. Oh, it's gone. And if we were to open up the database, DOB is gone, so it did work. It did delete it. Now, what is it actually doing? How is it? How is it actually deleting these items? Well, I'm gonna go in here. Basically, it's calling this this method right here. And we're gonna go to that method right now. Take a look. So, first of all, let's look at this. Sending a file name for the database, the table name, and then the field name. Okay. So we're gonna go in there first. Here it is. <clears throat> simple, simple. All right. First of all, the database connection has to be created. So there's a DB connect which adds the file name. Now there's a lot more behind this. If you go inside here, there's this connection stuff. It checks the connection states. So if the states uh, connected, it disconnects it. And then oh, down here, it's going to create a connection string, which basically shows you your, your type of uh, driver that it's using. So here's your Microsoft Jet driver. And over here, the source is a file name and user ID admin whatever stuff username ID and password here's where you can make some interesting stuff for securities and other stuff so if you need to create your own connection string you can you don't have to use the built-in functions okay all this stuff is all built in so it's all written you can all you can copy and paste the stuff out of it it doesn't matter just gotta mix it and match with it all right so here it goes it creates the uh, connection string it goes and opens the connection and checks here there's an error if there's an error it returns back true I don't know why but it does all right here's the connection and basically we're taking the current connection which is a connection just created here and we're passing it to this command connection command connection already exists in this module which is right here so this is a connection it's a global connection so this is where you can't have multiple database connections open at the same time because they're all using the same connection you have to go in there and rename it and make some you know private stuff uh, which can be done but this is just for a quick little demo it just shows you how to use one database and uh, mess around with it but you can actually create it where you can make it where it only can opens the database once and then it just writes, 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 and then disconnects at the end when it's done. So you don't have to do it like every single method like I'm doing it here. All right, I'm going to go back to that uh, delete fields. So here's the connection. The next part we want to do is command. We want to always clear the command parameters. This makes sure that basically everything is clear. You don't have nothing inside your, your list of commands to be set. And then here we define what type of command it's going to be. It's going to be a command text. Basically, text is means we're going to be building a... Um, we're going to send over like a query or an SQL statement that's going to execute and that's going to build whatever we need to build it. There's also other command types. If I go in here and delete, there is a stored procedure. Stored procedures whenever we use a built-in query. So if you have a query already built that deletes a table and asks for a table, you can do it that way. But in this case, it's just text. All right. Here's the actual SQL thing. Alter table, table name, drop column, field. Now, where the hell am I getting all this stuff from? Simple. Go to Google. And access alter table click on it Microsoft alter table and here there's the function alter table this one is looks like they're just taking 
can see this one taking employees they're taking the, the column this thing and they're changing the type from C from uh, 50 so up, oh here's the create it they create the table or well, they create they go open the table employees they add a column and the column is called is EMP emails and they make it text size 25 but emails are pretty long so over here they make it again tables the table already exists which is employees they alter the column instead of adding it and they're going to change this to that and that's how that 25 turns to 50 and there's a there's so this is this is the actual SQL statement okay so there's a lot of reference on the web to find stuff and that's how I'm doing here that's all it is simple you add and remove and you can actually make it with commas and add a whole bunch of them and delete a whole bunch of tables at one time if you wanted to all right, but that's how that one works and pretty much everything else is the same way so you see delete fields there's alter fields there's add fields there's drop table create tables create uh, create tables again why is there two okay this one lets you create tables with one shot this one lets you create tables and fields now there's something else here uh, you can also create multiple fields uh, if you were to create multiple fields it'd be something like this like oh, oops like if you wanted to create multiple fields of your statement it would look something like this like uh, let's see uh, first name and will be text 20 and then be the last name you know uh, text 20 and like that so you can see how this would be two fields to create first name and last name and just basically insert them in here fields so yeah, I mean, basically look up the web. It, there's tons of reference on there. Uh, so here's the get fields. This one uses a different one. This one actually uses the built-in uh, stuff here that loads a, a schema table. Basically, that's used for uh, data tables and stuff like that. Uh, up here in your forms, you have these things called uh, there's data view, data grades, or data sets. These you can load databases straight to them, and they can read database and add and stuff like that. And there's a lot of neat built-in stuff, but you don't have much uh, control over what you can do and what you can you know change um, what you, you do is just it's a, I'm used to writing SQL statements because if I write an SQL statement and I need to do it with, Mark, uh, with Microsoft or I mean with MySQL the state everything stays the same the statement just changes a little bit but same procedure everything has to be done alright so that is a quick uh, database entry here or database intro uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stop here for now and I'm going to the next video with uh, how to actually uh, you know, write your own queries and uh, make the kind where you can uh, send data over and get a reply back and, you know, add records and shit like that. Alright, so I'm going to end this now because I have no long, no idea how long I've been recording. Alright, Steve, out.